up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another daily vlog and guys we're starting a new build series. So we are going to take a knife that I've had for many years and we are going to redesign it in my own way. We're going to use different steel, we're going to you know just change a few things up and the knife that I'm talking about is this right here. So this is the Rat 3 by Ontario. I've had this for I guess going on about four or five years now and I absolutely love this knife. It has been in my EDC bag the entire time. It has been baton through wood. It's shaved wood. It's shaved everything. We've cut through everything with it. I've put about 10 edges on it since I've had it. I mean I have really used and abused this knife and I want to redesign it. I want to take everything that's awesome about this knife and then add my own flair to it. So that's what we're going to be doing. But if we actually get over here to the, the workbench, I'm going to actually break down the decisions that I made and why I changed what I changed and then explain that to you. We might go ahead and uh, get it put on the ADC RV2 that we're going to be using and get that cut out. I don't know how far we're going to get into it tonight, but I want to go ahead, sit here and explain why I made the decisions that I made so that maybe whenever you start designing your knives, you can go, okay now I remember him talking about this or talking about that or maybe I should think this way so that's what we're gonna do let's jump into it get over here and start talking about it okay so now that we're actually at the workbench I want to give y'all an insight as to how I designed the knife some of the things that I thought through whenever I was making it and why I wanted to change what I changed now what we started with was of course the Rat 3 by Ontario it's basically the same thing as a SE3 and I really like this knife but I wanted to change it up a little bit for one I love having the extra finger choil up here up front so you can really choke up on that blade and use that jimping and use it for fine work but when it came back to this other choil right here if you're gonna hold the knife like this this is not that comfortable so what I wanted to do was take this design aspect right here with the second finger choil and add in my own handle shape that feels perfect in the hand, especially for my hand. And what I did was I just kind of designed it off of this other finger choil right here, just like that. So we left the front finger choil. So the front finger choil and then the finger choil on the actual handle itself. And how I designed this was I did take this and I laid it down, I went and got my, my pencil and I just went all the way around the knife, drew it out and then I started modifying the knife to have the finger choil that I want so just kind of going through and doing little modifications erasing little areas that I didn't want anymore and you kind of start getting the design that you want based off of that and then you just start modifying it some more, tightening things in, and then of course you have the blade which I changed up completely. Now the template that I used to kind of design this off of, it does have a drop point recurve blade, but on this one I just did a nice swooping recurve on it. The one that we're going to be designing this time, we are actually going to have a hollow grind on the belly there where that recurve is and then we're going to have a flat grind on the upsweep. So we're going to do something quite a bit different than this knife. Plus this knife doesn't have that secondary finger choil right there. But how I decided what I was going to do with this with like the hollow grind and the way that this is done with the recurve versus just doing this blade which is a lot easier. I wanted to have something that was great for everything whether it be stabbing, piercing something with the tip like it is with the flat grind or this hollow ground area so if I need to cut rope or hose or do some kindling or something like that 
having this area with that hollow grind is going to make that absolutely awesome for doing those things because it's going to pull everything to the center and it's going to be a lot easier to work with things by having it built that way and then of course I'm going to have this area the secondary finger choil so I can really choke up on that blade for whenever I need to do fine work so that's the whole point behind the blade it does still have a little drop point to it we are going to do uh, three pins and then a hollow lanyard tube versus these three right here with this little lanyard hole back here we're going to just do it how I like to do it so that this is kind of tapered towards the center uh, to make it to where the lanyard is actually more comfortable in your hand so that's how I came up with the design basically just taking knives that I like and modifying them to fit how I want them to fit in my hand and thinking through okay what's this going to be used for am I going to be chopping with it am I going to be trying to split wood with it am I going to be going through and actually whittling things or shaving things am I going to be cutting hose am I like you know regular rubber hose am I going to be uh, cutting string rope things like that that's how I wanted to design this so that's how I designed it and I think that y'all should really think through what y'all are going to be doing with the knife and if you're going to just make a knife don't just go and find a template online and then make that knife you know maybe if you did find a template cool take and modify it make it your own you know th there's something about being able to make something that you designed and created or that you just thought had your your thought going into it okay I'm gonna do these things with it but I really like a good hunter style knife a survival knife a little drop point knife I like that shape and design so I'm gonna print that out but who's to say that that's gonna fit your hand you know you need to take it maybe put it on some template material like this this is just what you can get from Lowe's it's just wood now take something put that template on there cut it out and then put it in your hand see how it fits your palm your fingers so that whenever you're holding it you don't end up with any weird spots that don't work right feel free to modify those designs and make them fit the things that you're going to be doing don't you don't have to make the same uh, trout knife you don't have to make the same drop point recurve spear points that everybody else makes you are making something that you are gonna make with your own hands so you get to decide how it's gonna be built so that's what we're gonna end up doing now I am gonna cut this out right here put it on the steel and then that way y'all can see what the size looks like on here let's go ahead let's jump into that So we're going to get it put on here and I like to be able to use these scrap pieces to of course make scrap knives and different things like that. I think what I'm going to end up doing with this scrap piece is I'm going to take it and I'm actually going to forge it instead of doing stock removal with this one. I'm going to take this little piece, I'm going to forge out a handle and do all that stuff so that's going to be pretty cool. Future little knife build. But let's go ahead and get this drawn out. So there we go right there. That's how much steel we're going to end up using to make this knife. And like I said, this is 80 CRV2, 316 7 inch thick. 
I think it's going to take that hollow grind real well with that thickness. But that is where we're at. So we're going to go ahead and hop back to where I'm actually talking to y'all, to where y'all can see me. We're going to get this wrapped up. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up today's daily vlog. Now, I want to start this off with showing y'all the drop point recurve on the actual belt. So I know that this video is not about this knife, but I had a lot of people asking about it. So there it is on the actual belt right there. Pull it out. Do what you got to do. Go right back in. Pull it out. It's that simple. Nothing super difficult about it, but it rides perfectly on the belt. So the sheath itself, I don't know how well y'all can see this, but the sheath itself is right with the belt. So the way that I did the clips, it makes it to where it's really comfortable when you go to sit down, do whatever you got to do. It doesn't hurt to lean back on it or do anything like that. But if you're doing something and you got to get your knife, all you got to do, go back. There you go. You can do the whole crocodile dundee. That's not a knife. This is a knife type deal. But I absolutely love this sheath. And I'll put that right there. Now, when it comes to using these Ulti clips, you got to actually, you know, put a little pressure on them to get them off because they are meant to lock into place and not go anywhere. But love the way that turned out. I know that, again, this is not the video for this knife, but I did have a few of y'all asking about that, so I figured out I'd throw it in there. Now, let's go ahead and move you up just a hair. There we go. So when it comes to the way that I wanted this video to go, I wanted just to be able to sit down and talk to y'all about how I designed the knife and how I thought through that process. Because I know that y'all see me make a bunch of knives, y'all kind of hear a few of the things that I decide whenever I'm going through and designing it, but I really wanted y'all to understand that making a knife is all about what you plan on doing with it, whenever it comes to the way you do the shape, the edge geometry, how thick you're going to leave the edge, how thin you want the edge, what it's going to be used for, so I want y'all to really think through that and not so much get caught up on the fact that you got to have a template for something or an outline or a stencil for something. I want y'all just to go through and think through what you're going to be doing with the knife. And if you need to get a template to give you a starting point, cool. But try your hardest not to do that same exact design as the template. Modify it a little bit. Make it fit your hand better. Just do some things that make it your thing. That's what it's all about. As a creator, as a maker, as someone who, who does this stuff, whether it's for a living or a hobby, it's all about doing what you want to do. The cool thing is you don't have to go straight into selling your knives or anything like that. So feel free to just have artistic freedom to do your knives how you want to do them. You're not having to get straight out into the market and have everybody judge your stuff. Dude, just make what you want to make. And that, that's what I do here. A lot of the stuff that I create is stuff that I've thought through and just went, man, that looks really cool, but I don't know if I would make it that way, so I'm going to modify it. Or I'll just make up something in the, on the fly and just make that. But it's all about y'all just having fun with it and um, not being so wrapped up around what everybody's doing on Facebook forums or on YouTube or anything like that. Make what you want to make. Design it how you want to make it. Do your thing. Guys. That is the end of this one. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up or share this video, one of my other videos. I am making uh, my builds to where they're their own playlist. So you can actually just click on a playlist, watch like the build from the beginning to the end as if it was a TV series. You can go through and do that. You can also share those entire playlists. So if there's a playlist that you like, that you want to show somebody and let them watch it through, you can actually share those playlists. Guys, Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for checking this out. And if you thought I was going to forget about it, bam, hit that subscribe button right there and turn on the notification bell so you get notified for when we actually cut this out and do some stuff to it. Guys, 
Y'all have an amazing day, and I'll catch y'all tomorrow.